Hello and welcome to Move Productions presentation of Willy Wonka Jr. Please silence all cell phones and no flash photography. If you need to leave the theater at any point, please use the end doors located behind you. In case of an emergency, there are also emergency exits to your left and right. At the end of I've Got a Golden Ticket, there will be some cannon noises. There will be a 15 minute intermission. Feel free to grab some refreshments in the lobby. Please join us again this summer for Legally Blonde and 101 Dalmatians. And now, without further ado, Willy Wonka Jr. Thank you. 
These two very old people are the father and mother of a Mr. Bucket. And these two very old people on the other side of the bed are the mother and father of a Mrs. Bucket. That is Mr. Bucket, that is Mrs. Bucket, and that young child right there is their only son, Charlie. Here you go, Grandpa Joe. Cabbage soup. Every day, nothing but cabbage soup. Cheer me up, Charlie, tell me, what's the chocolate news? Wonka's got a new bar out. But we built an owl base, Mallow. With flavor shifters. Flavor shifters? My. Papa, what's the latest cap count to date? 1,249,976 perfectly installed toothpaste caps, Charlie. You think I might work at the toothpaste factory someday? Let's hope not, Charlie. <laughs> what kind of positive thinking is that? Charlie's gonna work for Mr. Wonka making chocolate bars. Grandpa Joe, now don't go filling that boy's head with dreams of candy. He's from a long line of candy men. And women! Well, Wonka hasn't hired anyone since Slugger's spies. Was the distractor to steal his candy balloon recipe? He was so angry, he gathered up all the workers saying, I'm sorry, but you're all gonna have to go home, and then he locked the gates of the factory forever. But Mr. Wonka still makes candies. I smell them on my way to school. Yes, but no one goes in and no one comes out. Shadow workers. Maybe the undead. Oh. Grandpa Joe, you're gonna give Charlie nightmares again. What'd she say? She's making bathtub gin. We'll play gin? I'm in. <laughs> Charlie, run out and see if anybody's done with the newspaper. Okay, Dad, but you'll have to feed Grandpa George. <laughs> see you, Grandma. Your cabbage soup. I thought we were playing gin. <laughs> See those kids? They meet outside Charlie's house every day for the nickel in hand so they can buy a Wonka bar from their local candy man. The only one with no nickel is Charlie. Hey, Dad! What are you pointing at? Hey, Charlie, look at the tree up. I got a nickel. Here's the paper, Dad. Well, 
Well, you look at this. Welcome back to be open to a lucky few. You mean they're actually going to let people inside the factory? Read what it says. Mr. Willy Wonka has decided to allow five children to visit his factory. The lucky five will tour the factory and win a lifetime supply of Wonka chocolate. Good factory. You mean a lifetime supply of chocolate? Read on. <laughs> five million golden tickets have been hidden among five million or American candy bars. The finders of these tickets will win the tour and the chocolate. That's a million to one shot. I wonder if anyone's won yet. I mean, the paper's a day old. Charlie, Charlie, could you imagine winning? Who's the factory? Meeting Mr. Wonka? Seeing for yourself all those undead zombie workers? <laughs> Eating a lifetime supply of chocolates? Eating, Eating a, a lifetime supply of chocolates. <laughs> It's back to the twists and turns of the toothpaste for me. Goodbye, Mr. Bucket. See you later, Mrs. Bucket. Charlie, remember, we may be starving, we may be poor, but the Bucket family always... Thanks, positive! Write it in purple ink, Charlie, purple ink. Positive! <laughs> And so it was back to the boring kind of factory work for Mr. Bucket, and was off to school for Charlie, but on the way he heard some very exciting news. Did you hear? Someone found a golden ticket. Really? When? Just now. Look! Peanuts, cashews, but mainly results. 
So I had my pack to go, stop shelling nuts, and start shelling crackers. Daddy, that hideous reporter said my name wrong on live television. He's getting fired for you to hear anything. Anyway. After days of shelling chocolate, one of the factory dolls finally found the plastic golden ticket. I let her take the lucky piece of chocolate home to her 17 kids. <laughs> How generous. Yeah, I know I'm sarcastic. I'm on fire. Fire, do you hear me? Fire, fire, fire! This is Penny Spell, where the sweet has turned sour. Yes, I know. 
For goodness sake, open it, boy! Please open it. You're making me jumpy. Well, that's Dad. Who wants a piece? We wouldn't dream of it, Charlie. Come on, Dad. Have a piece. You deserve something special after losing your job. What? That's not true, Charlie. That's not funny. <laughs> Tell me it's not true. Well, Star. It is true. It will not start. Now, what kind of party is this? Let's splurge a bit. Put on the radio. You know what? Your father's right. What's a little more electricity? Go ahead. Turn on the radio. Really? This is the best birthday ever. <laughs> Boy, open it. I can't. I'm too nervous. We'll do it together. 
lifetime supply of chocolate. On three. One, two, three. Good thing, really, because chocolate's actually very fast. <laughs> You're right, Charlie. A lifetime supply of it, you'd be as round as the dome on Capitol Hill. <laughs> yeah. I've never heard of candy. Oh, walk for that matter. Treasure chest, whichever. 
Charlie. That is if you think you can handle it. Handle it? You just turn the face! I never thought I'd see the day when I would fix the world today. Good morning. Look at the sun. I never thought that I would be slap in the lap of luxury. Cause I have sad. They couldn't be done. But it can't be done. Yes, it can. Moment. 
Now see here, Mr. Wonka, you think that our ticket's phony. No, yeah, but it's a pleasure to meet you too, Mr. <laughs> you know me, Mr. Wonka. Do I? Great. Then let's proceed. We begin with a contract. All right. Everybody, please take a pen and you and you. You? Right. That. I hereby swear not to touch, clutch, malign, assign, stare, tear, wear, assess, any of such things, party of the first part, lower and ipsum, de facto, have his corpus, and so on and so forth. Please sign right here. Um, no, not without my lawyer. Let me give him a ring. No television reception, no mobile phone reception. Duh. Ha! Where do I sign? Right here. Yes, good, great, perfect. <laughs> Mr. Bunker, just how many rooms has your factory? You must have signed the contract first. <laughs> Perfect! Great! That! Mr. Bunker, just how many rooms has your factory? An excellent question, Augustus! In the Wonka Chocolate Factory, there are several thousand rooms. I'll show you what some of them are. In this room here are the luminous lollies reading in bed at night. In that room there are exploding sweets for when enemies start a fight to fear. And in this room here is the rock candy mine, they say that it's three miles deep. And in that room there are the marshmallow pillows, too much when you just can't sleep. Big room, high room, long room. Seventeen hundred candy showrooms. Small room, powder room, bad rooms, long rooms. Full fine chocolate and almonds. Here are the chocolate cows from which we get chocolate milk. And in that room there are the hot ice creams for a cold day smooth as silk. And in that room are chocolate nipples, treats beyond compare. Your eye will still be stare. You should see them tear their hair. And it's all because of... This room here! And this room here! And this room here! Oh, then you must know all about Loompa Land with its 
thick jungles infested with horn swabblers, snozzy wangers, and those terrible wicked wang doodles. Wang doodle? There's no such thing. I assure you, there is such a thing. And a wang doodle would just love to sink its sharp fangs right into you. Augustus, my chocolate must never be touched by human hands. Too late! <laughs> right, he's got to give his whole dumbbellion to people. I think I already lost the child as a chocolate smelter. Such a shame, too. He seems to know a lot about food. Alas, take Mrs. Gloop's poop to the strawberry dipping room and heat him to precisely 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Is it Fahrenheit? Does it? I don't know. Do you know? Well, 102 degrees Fahrenheit, not any higher, or he may spontaneously boil. And that would be a tragedy. Because Augustus will be damaged? My dear Augustus was damaged long ago. Oh. The tragedy would be all the wasted chocolate. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mrs. Gloop. Good luck. What? Everyone else, please follow closely as we continue on our journey. Please, Miss Dilly, now. 
And here we have the inventing room. This is the most important room in my entire factory, where my most secret inventions are cooking and simmering in here. Voila! The everlasting gourmet gobstopper. It looks like gum. That's because it is gum. Gum? Gum? The oh. most dazzling gum in the entire world. Gum? Oh no! An entire three-course meal without any of those nasty calories. Gum! But, unfortunately, it has not been perfected yet, so we must not chew it. Gum. This gum here is much better than that one. This gum here is a three-course dinner. Pea soup, roast beef, blueberry ice cream. Blueberry is the nicest ice cream. You may feel fat, but in fact, you're thinner. Even after a three-course dinner. Do that is quite remarkable. What did he do, Wonka? 
just take one sip of my fizzy lifting drinks and you will float on air. Float on air? No! Well, unfortunately, our legal advisors have forbidden us from taking even the tiniest of sips. So come on, there's so many more interesting things to see. Stupid boys. <laughs> Mr. Wonka? Kids? They left us behind! Grandpa Joe, what's that? Okay, try it. Who's there? <laughs> try it. Try it. Should we? I mean, I guess one tiny sip would hurt. <laughs> Thing I am after. 
Actually, now, that particular chute leads directly to the garbage incinerator, but don't worry, there's a chance it may not be lit today. Ah, uh, chance? Well, generally, the incinerator's only lit every other day. I just can't remember whether or not today is a burn day. <laughs> I suppose we'll find out, but onward and upward, backwards and forwards, I will be with you in a moment.
very much, Bucket and Bucket, for coming. I am sure you had a wonderful time, and I'm also sure you can find your way out. That's it? What about Charlie's lifetime supply of chocolate? Oh, yes, yes. You'll receive your lifetime supply of chocolate, but other than that, this day has been a complete and utter waste of time. And chocolate. Good day, Charlie Bucket, and goodbye. I don't serve lessons at chocolate. You see, I broke the rules. I tasted the fizzy lifting drink in the inventing room. I'm very sorry, but thank you for the tour. It was better than Christmas. Oh, bless you, Charlie! You did it! You did it! Now look here, Chuck. Look here. It was my idea. Uh, no, I created this contest with one purpose in mind: to find the perfect person to make new candy dreams come true. I don't understand. See, this is a test of character, Charlie. I carefully selected each of the rooms we passed through to tempt each of our golden ticket winners. You, Charlie, you did something remarkable. You you gave it to temptation, but you managed not to get caught. And then, admitting your guilt? Oh, Charlie, you marvelous boy! But the other kids are... Oh, they'll all be fine. And they'll receive the booby prize, a lifetime supply of chocolate. <laughs> That's the booby prize! What's the real prize? Charlie, do you love my factory? It's the most wonderful place in the world. That's good to hear, because from this moment on, it's yours! I don't understand! Oh, I'm giving you my factory. I need an heir, and that person is you. You want me to run this entire place by myself? Both of my mom and dad and grandpa Oh yeah, they can all come live with you. I'd love to. Positively love to. 